بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نائن سیون ڈبل زیرو ایٹ ٹو بایولوجی نومبر ٹوینٹی ٹو پیپر فائیو ٹو دس واز ون آف دا ویئرڈسٹ پیپرز آف آل ٹائمس دا ریزن بینگ دیٹ دا گریڈ اے واز گیون ایٹ فورٹین آؤٹ آف تھرٹی واز این اے سو ایف یو گاٹ فورٹین آؤٹ آف تھرٹی ان دس پیپر یو گاٹ این اے دا کمپوننٹ گریڈ ووڈ بی این اے I mean, in every paper, you know, when your result comes, we get the component and the component tells us what grade did you get in each component, in each paper, a paper 1, paper 2, paper 3, paper 4 and paper 5. So if you got 14 out of 30, usually this is between 19 and 21. But in this paper, paper 5, 2, you got 14 out of 30 and that was an A. So that's a very difficult paper. Uh, the paper is for one hour 15 minutes. It is on the same day as you know it is tomorrow. You have this paper and this is only for 30 marks. And some of you will have also taken the paper 2 which is for the same time but that is for 60 marks. Now the major skill in doing a paper 5 is that you read the question at least 2 to 3 times. You underline the keywords and then you see how much you've understood it. And you must read the whole question. So that you know, okay, this is the beginning of the question and then you must know what is the later on, what are the questions on it. So this must have been read at least three times. You must read this three times. You must underline the keywords. Egg albumin is a good source of protein. Some eggs contain up to 10% protein. A biuret assay can be used to determine the concentration of protein in egg albumin. Biuret reagent is a mixture of copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide. You should know copper sulfate is blue, sodium hydroxide is like water, it's a clear solution. In a biuret assay, biuret reagent is added to a solution. If protein is present, copper in the biuret reagent binds with the nitrogen atoms that form peptide bonds in the protein. This binding caused the reagent to change from a clear pale blue to a purple color. Different concentrations of protein result in different intensities of purple color. So that means light purple, medium purple, dark purple, very dark purple, very, very dark purple. A colorimeter, not a calorimeter, this is a colorimeter, C-O-L-O-R. This measures the color. This is, this is actually mentioned in the syllabus. A colorimeter can be used to measure differences in the intensity of the purple color in samples tested. Figure 1.1 shows a colorimeter that measures the absorbance of light when it passes through different colored solutions. So these are the cuvettes. Cuvettes are these tubes in which have these different shades of purple in them. And then you can see the readings. This was 0 0.0, then 0 0.04, then 0 0.13 and then 1.44. So, outline how a colorimeter is set up so that a test cuvette can be placed in the slot to obtain a correct measure of intensity of a colored solution. So this is basically this one here that we are talking about. How a colorimeter is set up so that a test cuvette can be placed in the slot to obtain a correct. So we put that liquid in it and then we want to measure it. So now this is for two marks. Now basically what are you going to do? You, you want to use a colored filter or you're going to calibrate the colorimeter. That means set it to zero. How are you going to set it to zero that you, instead of putting any liquid in it, you just put water in it. So when you put the water in it, that should be zero because water does not contain any, it's not going to absorb any light. So either you said that, either you said use a colored filter or a set wavelength or you said you calibrate the calorimeter to zero, set the calorimeter to zero by putting a cuvette with just uh, distilled water in it. So set calorimeter to zero water used to calibrate the colorimeter. Now coming to the B part of the question, looking at it gives me nightmares because when I see so much of written material, my brain goes into brain fog. 
and I just seem can't seem to read it. But please remember, that's why I say you must have some chocolate in the morning before you go for this exam. Uh, a student carried out a biuret assay to determine the concentration of protein in egg albumin from eggs produced by a chicken that had been fed on a new type of chicken feed. The eggs produced by the chicken before eating the new feed contain 6% uh, of protein in the egg albumin. Egg albumin is diluted to obtain a concentration that is suitable for testing in the biuret assay. For example, egg albumin with 6% protein is diluted by a factor of 10 to obtain a 0.6% solution for a biuret assay. So 6% is diluted by a factor of 10 to obtain a 0.6%. First was 6%, then it was 0.6%. So this is diluted by 10. To carry out the biuret assay on egg albumin of unknown protein concentration, a calibration curve needs to be produced. This involves using standard solutions of known concentrations of protein. The range of concentration that can be measured using a calorie meter in a biuret assay is 0.1 to 1%. A stock solution of 1% can be diluted using distal water to prepare the standard solutions of protein. Describe how the student could prepare a 0.1% solution of protein using the stock solution. So from 1%, you have to prepare a 0.1%. Construct a table to show how the dilution is made for the 0.1% solution and for other concentrations the student could use to produce a calibration curve for the biuret assay. Now we have to remember is that the range has to be made between 0.1 and 1%. Now yesterday also the student asked me on WhatsApp and you know they were making a serial dilution of uh, making it 0 0.001 and 0 0.0001 and all that. But that is wrong. You see, what you had to do is it had to be between the values had to be between 1.0 and 0 0.1. And there is no fixed volume that you are supposed to make. I'm, of course, making it to 10 cm cube. But even if you had made it to 20 cm cube, they didn't specify any of such things. And this only is this this whole table is only for two marks. And what does the mark scheme say in the table? In the table, the mark scheme is only saying correct method to dilute the stock solution with water to 0.1%. And at least five stated concentrations, including 0.1. With all correct volumes of stock and water, including volume in units and concentration unit. So the percentage concentration, so we would need to have at least five stated concentrations. So I would need to add another one here between this. So I just change this table a little bit. So the important thing is that at least you should give five concentrations always. Even if you didn't want to give the 1%, you could have given another 0 0.28, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1 again. So you could have given that, but this is the rule that we follow is that we have to give five concentrations. Then, of course, the favorite question is, which everybody should get right, is identify the independent and the dependent variable for the preparation of the calibration curve. So independent, what you are changing is the protein concentration. So the protein concentration is the independent variable. Now, what are you measuring? What is the thing that you're measuring? You're measuring the absorbance of light. How much is the calorimeter is measuring the absorbance of light? So that is the dependent variable. Now coming to the part three of the question, complete figure 1.2 by labeling the axis and sketching the expected calibration curve. Naturally, more the protein, darker the purple color, more light absorbed. So more the protein, more light absorbed. So there is some sort of a positive correlation. And that is what you should have done. So now this is over for two marks. So X axis and Y axis must be labeled. So you do that and then you draw a line showing the positive correlation. Now you can see if we say protein concentration is one, two, three, four, five, something like this. So here also we have arbitrary units, one, two, three, four, five, so it's increasing. So less absorbed at one, more absorbed at two, and so it will have a linear or a positive correlation. So this is the sort of graph you're going to get and there were only two marks and two marks for labeling the axis and one mark for uh, the uh, graph that you had shown me.
The bi-unit assay assumes that if the same intensity of color in the bi-unit test is obtained with a test sample and a protein standard, then the protein concentration is the same even though they are different proteins. This is summarized in figure 1.3. Protein standard solution, same intensity of purple color. And test sample, bi-unit test. Assumption, same concentration of protein in both solutions. Use the information on the bi-unit test given on page 2 to explain why different proteins of the same concentration will result in the same intensity of purple color in the bi-unit test. Now, if you look at page 2, as it says, uh, what you have to understand, it says, is that the bi-unit reagent with the nitrogen atoms that form the peptide bonds. Now, we've got to now quickly remember this, that the peptide bond is what? See, now, as you can see here, this is... Uh, primary structure. So this has 25 amino acids. So there will be 24 peptide bonds between the amino acids. And this is where we go back to the question and then probably you can understand the question now. Now what was it saying in the question? You went to back to page 2. I've gone there. Explain why different proteins of the same concentration will have the same intensity of purple color. The reason is that the copper ions would bind with the nitrogen atoms that form the peptide bonds. Now, this is a paper in which you can write the wordings of the question and you will get a mark. But because you have been able to comprehend that there was that part which was given in the question which they are asking. But that for that, you need to have a skill. So the copper ions will bind with the nitrogen atoms that form the peptide bonds. And the two proteins will have the same number of peptide bonds. That is why you are getting the same purple color. The intensity of the color is the same. So copper ions bind with nitrogen atoms with it form the peptide bonds and will have the same number of peptide bonds. Now we come to the planning and the designing question, which is of course a very favorite part of this paper in which everybody should get full marks. And this is a six mark question. Everybody should get full marks by writing more than what is needed. And there's something which I tell you again and again, you can write in every planning and designing. Describe how the student would use the standard protein concentration prepared in B1 to obtain a calibration curve. Determine the concentration of protein in the egg albumin from eggs of chicken fed on the new chicken feed. Do not repeat any details given in A of how to use the calorimeter or in B1 of how to a standard protein solution would be prepared. Your method should be set out in a logical way and be detailed enough to let another person follow it. Now, as I've said many times is that, you know, when you are going to do this planning and designing, you've got to think you're actually doing this in the lab. So you pick up the test tube and the first thing you decide is whenever we're going to talk about a liquid is you're going to talk about the volume. You just can't pour in one centimeter or two centimeter or anything. You've got to decide, okay, I'm going to use this much of the egg and this much of the protein concentration and how much of the biuret am I going to add? So all that must be standardized. And whenever you're talking of a liquid, you must say the same volume of the protein concentration and the egg, then the same volume of biuret uh, solution, same volume of biuret solution. So if you are thinking like that, only then you will give me all these points. Otherwise, you just say, take the protein concentration, take the egg, take biuret solution. If you want to write that sort of an answer, I'm sorry, we're not going to give you any marks. And then you're going to blame the whole, the whole entire Pakistan for all your sins and say, oh my, I didn't get a grade, but my paper was very good. I know one of the students commented that, Miss, we love it when you roast the students. But the, frankly speaking, I need to roast and toast you all. Because you all don't write the correct things and then you expect us to give you marks. If I'm the examiner, well, I'm going to read what you write. If you don't write the correct wordings, I can't give you marks. If you just said, take the protein and take the egg and then add by your it, where, where did you say volume? Where did you specify the volume? Where did you specify the concentration? Where did you specify, uh, okay, then what are we going to do after we've taken the protein concentration and the egg and then we've added the by your it solution? Then what do we do? We mix it. So you stir it or you mix the protein concentration or the egg and the biuret. Then you measure the absorbance in the calorimeter. Then you see, okay, how much was the absorbance? Say it was 0 
then you use the calibration curve to find the protein concentration in the egg then you dilute the egg suspension by a factor of 10 and then you same concentration of biuret solution and then you for the take you keep it for the same time before taking the reading and then of course the favorite that i tell you you can write in every repeat the experiment three times and find the mean and then of course comes the most important one which you will all forget is the hazard risk and the precaution what was the hazard biuret solution is an irritant so you use gloves when you are handling that now that one sentence which everybody knows 50% of the students will not write that's why i get angry with you all because i feel is your duty as a student is to give me your best and when you make careless mistakes that really upsets me a lot so same volume of protein concentration same volume of biuret solution stir the egg and protein uh, or the and the biuret measure the absorbance and record calorimeter reading use the calibration curve to find the protein concentration in the egg dilute the egg by a factor of 10 use the same concentration of biuret solution leave for the same time before taking a reading uh, three or five repeats i always say five is a better bet they although in the mark scheme it says three a repeat and finding a mean then the by this is the important thing is the last point which is very important is you've got to give me the hazard hazard means is it low hazard medium or very high risk or hazard so this is usually what they give you is low and medium risk so medium is something which you can use in maybe in every so it's a it's a very medium risk experiment the reason is biuret solution is an irritant so you use gloves when you're handling it or you wear the goggles or a mask uh, because you might spill it by mistake so or it can touch your skin so that is why we say goggles and gloves and all that so i mean it's a very safe bet if you say medium risk experiment a chemical is an irritant or a corrosive uh, these are the words that we would like you to use and then of course the fact that you can use gloves and uh, goggles so that you prevent it from spilling onto yourself so this is a point that everybody must give in the planning whatever the experiment you must give this in the planning uh, and get that one mark for that and of course this is another one which you can do in every planning the repeat the experiment three times and find the mean and finding the mean is the important wording that you must use tomorrow uh, thank you for watching and the question two will we continue in the next video which follows after this so this was the first video and then we go on with the second video thank you once again in this video only question one has been answered in the next video will be we'll be solving the question two of this paper